transmitter and then 100 meters double phase trans uh, receiver transmitter and keep going until we reach at the end of line. So usually the max is here, the maximum distance 100 meters, 328. So insensitive to rain, so uh, the rain doesn't affect uh, the system and uh, even the uh, thermostatic heater. So the field of view, you can take an average of 100 meters between transmitter and receiver uh, and wide of 1.3 meters. This is uh, the average of the two degrees. So usually the, air, uh, the active infrared barrier can be acting as invisible fence or complementary to existing fence. So let's add invisible fence. If someone doesn't have a fence, so we can use those infrared beams to be able to protect all along the perimeter lines. So to, to have a couple of them single phase, double phase. If we use an existing fence, and the fence has from the ground level has six feet height, we need to use a common complementary max risk infrared inside the building, uh, I mean inside the fence, but the, uh, the uh, infrared tower must be 50 centimeters more higher than above the top of the fence. Because you know what? Because if someone put his ladder and need to climb and the tower is less, he will not be detected somewhere. So if we put more than, so we will have like a security uh, safe. And the distance here is up to 7 feet between you know, the, uh, the fence line and it will be the, uh, the first uh, Transmitter receiver. So eight feet towers, seven feet minimum, and the fan side is around six and a half feet. So we have two different input voltage for the towers to be operational. So 24 volt DC or 48 volt DC power input that each column must be powered on the side to be able to operate. So it depends on uh, the height and the average of the, uh, the uh, infrared beams. If it's 11 cells, 13 cells, so this is usually uh, the power consumption for the, uh, the tower itself. So 20, 25 uh, watts, 29 and 30 watts. It could be single or double phase. So double phase means the same cells on the, uh, each side, so it will be um, the double of power consumption. This is uh, an average value. So this is an exploded view inside uh, the infrared uh, tower. So the infrared tower, this is a double phase. So you see you uh, will have a couple of cells, up to 12 cells on each side. It has a control board here, it power, it has IP base for configuration for creating the zoning for virtual zones. And it can it could be power all the zones. And then you have like the, the control unit on the front fence. You have the same uh, similar control unit inside uh, the uh, the power I mean uh, the tower itself and it will that control unit it will give the data for all the, sen uh, the, uh, the sensor infrared and keep going to be able to communicate with you and transmit your receiver. So power supply, we have three options, 24 volt, 48, uh, 12 volt. The maximum range, 328 or less. Uh, there's no problem during winter condition. It could be operational during winter, uh, up to minus 40, plus 70. Uh, three type of columns, so one column only receiver, one column transmitter or both receiver transmitter with different height. So from one, 1.5 meters up to three meters height. So cells uh, 10 to 20, uh, 28. When uh, we tell 28, it will be 14. So double side, 14 cells on each side, so 14 times two. So a column could be up to 10 feet, single or double phase. Where would you use a 12 foot beam with that height? Be Which one? The, the 12 volt or the 12? No. 12 the 12 foot. Oh, the 12. Uh, I mean, the 12. Yeah. 
The 12 is uh, usually uh, the type of application that you saw, um, like data center case sensitive. Okay. We have, we have a couple of them that we we, we must have like uh, big towers that needs to be protected. Okay. So we use uh, use uh, the, the, the 12. Would that, be, would that be the one you'd be using as like a nuclear power plant? Um, yeah, it could be. Uh, electrical transfer? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Or sometimes we, we saw like different type of application that uh, the customer uh, told me, okay, we need to, to, to have more than uh, three meters. Okay. How, how we can do it? We can stack like two independent uh, columns, like 1.5 and 1.5 or 2 and 2. In existing, in existing, you have a four meter pole tied together. And you have, you know, this is a specific case of application we can. How stable are they in the wind? Stable, it's very stable uh, during uh, the wind, you mean the wind condition, yes. Usually when we, we have the anchors here, like the base, the base uh, metal, it's dependent on the height of the, the cones. If it's uh, three meters, the, the anchors, the, the metal will be higher. So it will be more stable, it will be one meter. So one meter, it will be enough stable for the three meters you don't, you know, even if it swings a little bit, it will not uh, affect the uh, the inverted beams. And if you use the uh, infrared beams on the on the building, so you need at least two or three attached bracket, one upper, one above, to make it stable. The taller the the unit, the bigger the base. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, even even if we, you don't use the anchors, we have like metal uh, metal ones that it, it will mm -hmm. be here, one upper, one lower. It will be enough stable <coughs> to handle the. Uh, so technical ca characteristic about the, uh, the tower itself, alarm information. So we can get the intrusion. Intrusion, what it means? So if someone cut at least two edges and beams at the same time, this is an intrusion. Discolidification means if there is one of the cells along the height of the beams that is obstructed due to any type of object, it could be truck that is stayed between the transmitter receiver more more than 60 seconds, one minute, it will be erased as a disqualification. So the system will take it. Temper protection. When we open here, the cover, plastic cover here. So there is a temper here. 